Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India This is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati. And what we have discussed so far, we have discussed about the overexpression of the uh, recombinant uh, factors within the host cells. We have in the in the previous modules, we have also discussed about many properties of the host as well as the plasmids and all other kind of molecular biology protocols. And now. Uh, in the previous module, we have discussed about how to overexpress these uh, uh, factors into the uh, into the host cells, and then subsequently we also discuss about how to purify them using the different chromatography uh, uh, chromatography techniques. And now, in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about how that how to characterize the product which you are going to get from the host cells. So, the as far as the product is concerned, in the biotechnology, you can have the two different types of product, the products which are non-biological in nature or the products which are of small molecules and the products which are of biological in nature such as the protein or the DNA. So, when you do uh, uh, this kind of overexpression and purification and then suppose you employ the biotechnology related principle, you could have either the small molecules or you could have the macromolecules. When I say the macromolecules, we are only going to focus about the DNA as well as the proteins. So, you can have the uh, different types of DNA which you are going to overexpress or which you are going to produce in the host cells. Simply you can have the different types of proteins which you can produce for different applications either it is for the therapeutic applications or for the uh, some other kind of applications. As well as the small molecule is concerned, the small molecules could be for that you are actually uh, uh, producing the secondary metabolites or you can actually also uh, uh, asking the host cells to uh, modulate its uh, metabolism in such a way th so that it, the host cell is start producing some of the metabolites in a higher uh, concentrations and so on. So, when the product comes from the host cells, uh, you have the either the small molecules, when I say small molecules which means I am talking about the molecules which are of the uh, organic component or the, the, the small molecules means which are of very, very small molecular weight. When I say about the macromolecules, I am talking about the uh, big molecules like DNA or the protein which you are over expressing in these cells. Now, whether you suppose uh, whether you take an example of benzene which is of a molecular weight of 78.11. The product characterization is a very, very critical as well as the important component of the development of a product using the biotechnology related principles. And when you talk about the characterization, the characterization can be done on the preset uh, guidelines. For example, you cannot use any random uh, uh, parameter or random criteria to characterize your uh, by, by products. So the, pro the, so, the product is always been characterized by a, a specific set of guidelines and when you say about the product whether it is the small molecule or the macromolecules, you have the different properties which you can be used for uh, characterization as well as which can be used very uh, confidently to say that the product what you are developing or whatever you have uh, uh, purified from the host cells are of the good quality. So, when I say about the product, you have the 
three or four different properties which can be very surely can be used for characterization. One of one of the fourth most uh, property is that you can use the molecular weight of that particular product. For example, in this case of benzene, we are we are saying that the benzene molecular weight is 78.11, but along with that you also have to characterize the functional groups or with this particular small molecules and at the end the third parameter which is also present is the sequence. For example, you can have the sequencing of that particular product. If it is a, it is a, if it is a polymeric product then the sequencing will tell you that how the monomeric subunits are being arranged. This is more relevant in the case of the polymeric substances such as the uh, DNA or the protein, but uh, uh, for the small molecules mostly people are using the molecular weight as well as the presence of functional group on these uh, small molecules to characterize them. For the molecular weight, uh, we are going to discuss two techniques, one is called as the gel filtration chromatography as well as the electrophoresis and the third technique what we are going to use is the mass spectrometry. Whereas, for the functional group you can use the techniques such as the IR or the UV visible spectroscopy and for the, uh, for the de de deducing the sequence you can use the sequencing technolo technologies what have been developed for the protein or the DNA. So, for the molecular weight you can have the three options either you use the gel filtration or you can use the electrophoresis or you can use the mass spectrometry. All these three techniques what we are going to discuss in this course are going to give you the different types of molecular weight. So, uh, for example, in the case of gel filtration you are going to get the native molecular weight whereas, in the case of electrophoresis you are going to get the native as well as the subunit molecular weight. For example, if you are working with the protein which is of a dimeric protein, so uh, the dimeric could be the, um, uh, the homolog homo, homo dimer or the heterodimers. In those cases, you can actually calculate the molecular weight under the native condition as well as under the denaturating conditions and the molecular weight what you are going to get under the denaturating conditions will give you the subunit molecular weight which means the individual mo monomer what is the molecular weight of that particular monomer. Similarly, for the uh, mass spectrometry, mass spectrometry is going to give you the native as well as the subunit molecular weight of that particular uh, small molecule or the uh, proteinaceous substances. Functional groups, functional groups are always been characterized by the IR or the UV visible spectroscopy and uh, whereas, the sequence, the sequence will be done by the different types of sequencing technologies what has been developed for the protein or the DNA and that actually will give you the uh, information about the arrangements of the monomer on these particular uh, in these particular polymeric substances. So, let us start with the first technique that is the gel filtration chromatography. If you remember we have already discussed in detail about the gel filtration chromatography, how the gel filtration chromatography is allowing you to purify the substances and what is the basic principle of chromatography. So, we are not going to discuss all those details now, what we are going to tell you that how the gel filtration chromatography can be used to determine the molecular weight of the uh, purified substances. So, the determination of molecular weight by the gel filtration chromatography, if you remember we have discussed this that you for determining the molecular weight of a unknown substance or the, uh, the product what you have pr produced from the host, what you are supposed to do is you have to run the different proteins or the different substances with the different molecular weight into the gel filtration chromatography and all these molecules are going to be elute at a different elution time or the elution volume and then what you can do is you can calculate the distribution coefficient or the distribution constant Kd which is actually been developed by the Kd is equal to V minus Vo by Vi and that Kd you can plot along with the log molecular weight of this, this particular molecules and that will actually give you a calibration curve. 
Now you can use this calibration curve to calculate the molecular weight of the unknown substance. So what you can do is you can run the unknown substance also along with this into uh, this uh, uh, under the identical conditions and you can calculate the distribution coefficient or the KD for the unknown, sub, uh, unknown sample or the sample which you are interested to uh, know the molecular weight and then you can use the this calibration curve to calculate the molecular weight. As it says that the molecular weight and the radius of gyration is uh, directly proportional. So, uh, if you remember the gel filtration chromatography works on the principle of radius of gyration instead of molecular weight or the equation between the distribution, of distribution constant versus the log molecular weight can be used to calculate the molecular weight of that particular substance. Now we are going to start the discussion about the electrophoresis. So electrophoresis is going to be used to calculate the native as well as the subunit molecular weight. Before getting into the detail of the electrophoresis, let me explain you what is the electrophoresis and how the electrophoresis as a technique is being evolved. So you can imagine that you are running a chromatography column and what you have done is you have loaded the different types of molecules onto this column and what will happen is when you inject these molecules, uh, they will first put, uh, run it onto the column and then what you do is you flow the buffer and because of the buffer these molecules are started distributing between the different planes or different substances and that is how they get separated and then they get immobilized onto the different planes within this particular uh, column and that is how you are actually going to get the purification done. Whereas now the, what is electrophoresis is that in the case of electrophoresis what you are going to do is you are going to take the mixture of sample what you are going to do is you can elude you can uh, uh, you can inject them onto the onto the uh, solid support and then instead of running the buffer what you are going to do is you are going to uh, put the uh, current and because you put the current in the uh, with the help of the electrodes uh, uh, what will happen is these molecules which are already been charge they will going to start migrating to their opposite electrodes and as a result the instead of buffer you are using the electricity as the uh, or the current as the uh, force to run the sample within this particular matrix and at the end what will happen is the molecules are going to be immobilized where they are going to have the net charge uh, and uh, ultimately it is going to be resolved as just like as we are doing in the chromatography. The only difference between the chromatography as well as uh, and the electrophoresis is that in the chromatography you are running a buffer to run the samples along with the column whereas in the case of electrophoresis you are running the samples in the in the field in the in the in the presence of the field. Now you can imagine that you are having a molecule which is of the Q charge and the external electricity field is E, then the force what you what this molecule is going to experience means the electricity electrophoretic uh, the force which to which will which will give them the electrophoretic mobility is going to be F equal to Q E and uh, you know that uh, if a molecule is running along with the electricity field, it is also going to experience some frictional forces because the molecule is going to experience the friction. So if uh, the friction forces F is going to oppose the movement of the charge particle which is going to be F is equal to Fv where F is the frictional coefficient and the V is the velocity of the electrophoretic mobility. So if the molecule is running with a velocity of V, the friction is going to be Fv where F is the frictional coefficient and the V is going to be the electrophoretic mobility. So where this molecule is going to be immobilized, the molecule is going to be stop running where the net force on this particular molecule is going to be 0 which means the 
the movement of a spherical throughout a liquid media with the viscosity n the frictional coefficient s f is going to be uh, 6 pi nita r v. So, if you replace the uh, this uh, f from the frictional forces what you are going to get the uh, uh, q e. So, the place where the place where the uh, molecule is going to be immobilized where the electrophoretic forces are going to be equalized by the frictional forces which means the q e is equivalent to 6 pi, ton, 6 pi nita r v which means the electrophoretic mobility is is equivalent to q divided by 6 pi nita r 6 pi nita r 6 pi nita r as you know that the charge is equivalent to the uh, ZD which means where the Z is the, uh, the is the valency of that particular molecule and E is the electro electronic charge. Then what you can do is you can write the electrophoretic mobility is equivalent to ZD divided by 6 pi nita r. Now, so, the electrophoretic mobility is equivalent to Z d divided by 6 pi nita r. Hence, the electrophoretic mobility uh, V is directly proportional to the charge and the inversely proportional to the viscosity of the media, size and the shape of the molecule. In the case of the relative mobility, it is directly related to the charge by the radius of the molecule, which means the charge divided by the radius of the particular molecule. Whereas, for a globular protein, the radius of the molecule is related to the molecular mass of the micromolecule, which means the radius of that molecule is directly proportional to the molecular weight of that particular substance. If the protein, if the protein especially for the globular protein, because the globular protein, the molecule is always being distributed along with the center. So, if the molecule is of 10 kDa, it is maybe having the uh, uh, some diameter and then if the molecule will be of 50 kDa, it may have the, the, the diameter which is in proportion to the molecular weight, which means the, rela the relative mobility is charged by the mass. So, the relative mobility is divided is equivalent to the charge by mass. So, uh, and that is the basic principle of the electrophoresis, which means if you are running a substance in the electrophoretic field, the electric forces are going to be opposed by the frictional forces because you are running the sample through the uh, matrix or through a gel like substances and these gel like substances are going to have the viscosity and this vis viscous material is going to oppose the movement of this molecule through them and as a result the frictional forces are going to oppose the movement of this particular molecule and the place where this molecule is going to immobilize the place where these two forces are going to be uh, same and after that it is not going to move or it is not going to have any kind of uh, absolute migration after that it is going to have the relative migration and if you go by these uh, equations the relative mobility is directly proportional to the charge by mass. Now, considering this people have started developing the electrophoretic apparatuses and they started doing the experiments how to develop a method so that you could be able to see that the separation of the molecules simply by applying the electro, uh, ele electricity. So, what they have done is they have started making the operators which is called as the end performing uh, electrophoresis in a moving boundary electrophoresis. In this method, the electrophoresis is carried in solution without a supporting media. The sample is dissolved in the buffer and molecule move to their respective counter charge electrodes. So, in this particular substances what you have is you have the two rods, uh, one is the cathode rod or the cathode electrodes, the other one is the, the anode, anode electrodes. Uh, so, this is the positively charged, this is the negatively charged and these two electrodes are being uh, joined together by a central uh, 
and tube and within and the middle of this central tube you have the place from where you can actually apply the sample. So, sample is loaded in the middle of the U tube and then the apparatus is connected to the external power supply and then you connect these electrodes for the power supply. As soon as you connect these electrodes for the power supply, the molecule of the opposite charges will start migrating. So, you can load the sample here and then they will start migrating. So, the positively charged uh, cations will start migrating towards the cathode whereas, the negatively charged anions will start migrating towards the anode and how you can monitor the movement of these molecules? You can actually mon monitor simply by a refractometer. So, what you can do is you can put a refractometer on the these uh, U, U tubes on both the sides and as soon as the molecule will pass through this refractometer, it is going to actually make the change in the refractive index of this particular tube uh, liquid which is pre present in this tube and that is how you can be able to know that a particular molecule is coming out. Okay? But uh, and once you see that a particular molecule is coming out, you could be able to put the pipette and you can actually take out this particular molecule. But what is the disadvantage of the moving boundary electrophoresis? The resolution of this technique was very low uh, as due to the mixing of the sample as well as the overlapping of the sample component. What happened is while the molecules are moving through the refractometer and you know that the sa your sample is coming out, the moment you take out the, the since it is being done in a liquid media, there is no supporting system, there is no support system. So, because of that the mixing of these molecules happens very frequently and as soon as you turn off the lights the or the turn off the uh, power, the, the molecules start mixing them together and, uh, and on the other hand when you try to take out the molecule 1, the some more molecules are also going to mixed up. The electrophoretic technique is not good to separate and analyze the complex biological sample. Instead, it can be used to study the behavior of a molecule in a electric field. So, this moving boundary electrophoresis was good simply for studying the behavior of the molecules, which means how these molecules are going to behave in the electric field, electric, electric field that you can only study, but you cannot analyze or you cannot analyze the complex biological sample because the complex biological sample are going to have the uh, substances of different molecular weight and they cannot be uh, separated by the this moving boundary electrophoresis uh, system. So, to uh, overcome this people have developed the zone electrophoresis. In a zone electrophoresis, uh, what you have in this method an inert polymeric sub support media is being used between the electrode to separately to separate and analyze the sample. The supporting media used in zone electrophoresis are absorbent paper, gel of starch, agar and the polyacrylamide. The major advantage of the presence of supporting media is that it minimizes mixing of the sample and immobilization of the molecules after the electrophoresis. So, compared to the moving bonding electrophoresis, people have started developing the zone electrophoresis where what they have done is they have put a supporting media and this supporting media is either the paper or agar or uh, polyacrylamide. So, these uh, supporting media was the inert media and how the supporting media has helped that it started immobilizing the substances on this inert media and as a result the, the, the molecules can be analyzed in a better way. It makes the analysis and the purification of the molecule from the gel much easier than the moving boundary electrophoresis. The gel electrophoresis is the best example of the zone electrophoresis. So, gel electrophoresis could be of two types, the horizontal gel electrophoresis, the classical example is the agarose gel electrophoresis which uh, mostly people use for analyzing the DNA or the RNA. Whereas, the vertical gel electrophoresis, so vertical gel electrophoresis in this system, the electrophoresis in this system performed in a discontinuous way with the buffer in the upper and lower tanker connect by the gel slab. It has the 
multiple modification in the running condition to answer the multiple analytical questions. So, we are in we are going to start with the vertical gel electrophoresis. Vertical gel electrophoresis has multiple components such as the gel cassette, you have the electrode chamber, you have the power pack or the power supply unit. The power the purpose of the power supply unit is that it it will allow the to run the uh, to supply the current of the positive or the negative charges then you have the tank and then you have the comb to prepare the wells and you also have the gel cassette so that you can be able to cast the gel of your choice uh, the buffer and the reagent for the electrophoresis, the different buffer and reagent for their purpose for vertical gel electrophoresis is that you have the timid, the timid it catalyzes the acrylamide polymerization, then you have the APS, it is the initiator for the acrylamide polymerization, then you have the TRIS SCL, it is the component of the running as well as the gel casting buffer, then you have the glycine, it is the component of the running buffer. Then you have the bromophenol blue, it is a tracking dye to monitor the progress of the gel electrophoresis. Then you have the Comasi billion blue R250, it is used to stain the polyacrylamide gel. Then you have the SDS, it is used to denature and provide negative charge to the protein. And then you have the acrylamide, the monomeric unit used to prepare the gel. And then you have the bis acrylamide. This acrylamide is a cross linker for polymerization of the acrylamide monomer to form the gel. So, these are the different buffers as well as the reagent what you need to perform the vertical gel electrophoresis. Uh, how the, um, the how these uh, molecules are helping to prepare the gel is that you have the acrylamide which is actually the monomeric substances and then you have the bis acrylamide which is the cross linking agent. When you put them together in the presence of timid which is actually and the ammonium persulfate, what happen is that the these linear, uh, linear monomers are interconnected by the cross linking with a bis acrylamide monomer to form a 3D mesh with varying pores. The size of the pore is controlled by the concentration of the acrylamide and the amount of bis acrylamide which is present in the gel. So, what happen is when you have the acrylamide as well as the bis acrylamide in the presence of timid and APS, the, uh, uh, the uh, bis acrylamide monomers are actually con connecting these acrylamide uh, 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 monomers and that is how you are actually making a mesh of fibers which means like the these are the acrylamide monomers which are actually being connected by the bis acrylamide, uh, uh, bis acrylamide and that is how you are actually making the three dimensional gel and that three dimensional gel is actually forming a pores and the size of these pores are going to be controlled by the amount of acrylamide as well as the amount of bis acrylamide which is which you are going to provide. Uh, in a, in a vertical gel electrophoresis, we cast two types of gel which means you are going to cast the stacking gel as well as the resolving gel. So, in a vertical gel electrophoresis, you are actually casting two types of gel, one is called the stacking gel and the other one is called as the resolving gel. First, the resolving gel solution is prepared and poured into the gel cassette for a polymerization, a thin layer of organic solvent such as butanol or isopropanol is layered to stop the entry of oxygen. So, uh, when you polymerize the, uh, the resolving gel, you actually overlay a small uh, solution of the uh, butanol or the isopropanol that is actually to stop the entry of oxygen because the polymerization uh, of by using the acrylamide as well as the bis acrylamide is a free radical mediated reaction. So, th when the timid and the APS are uh, mix mixed together, they form the free radicals and that is how they activate the cross linking of the acrylamide monomer to the by the bis acrylamide uh, cross linking agents. But if you have the oxygen, this uh, free radicals are going to be neutralized and that is how it is actually going to inhibit the polymerizations. 
uh, oxygen neutralizes the free radicals and slow down the polymerization and make the top layer smooth. After polymerization of the resolving gel, a stacking gel is poured and comb beads fitted into the gel for construction of different lane for the sample. So, this is what uh, you have the gel cassette, you have the electrode chamber and then you have the tank where you are going to place this. For initially what you do is you first cast the resolving gel, then you cast the stacking gels. The only difference between the resolving and the stacking gel is that the composition of the resolving as well as stacking gel is very different. And, uh, and then once this uh, casting is over, uh, then you use, then you actually going to uh, place this particular cassette into the, uh, into the apparatus and then you are going to resolve, then you are going to uh, apply the sample and you are going to resolve them. How to run the gel? The sample is prepared in a loading dye containing SDS beta mercaptoethanol in glycerol to, de to denature, the, uh, denature the sample and the presence of glycerol facilitate the loading of the sample in the well. As the samples are filled in a vertical, there is distance drift between the molecule at the top versus the molecule at the bottom. So, you can see that in a vertical gel electrophoresis, when you have the lanes which are actually in the vertical direction. So, what happen is the molecule which is present here and the molecule which is present here is actually having the, uh, the distance and because of this, if you analyze them and if you do not do anything so that they will come together they are actually going to have the, uh, this, the separation between them which is not ok. So, uh, the, this problem is taken care once the sample run through the stacking gel. The pH of the stacking gel is 6.8 and at this pH the glycine. So, when you, when you run these samples, you run them in a, in a buffer which contains the glycine as well as the tris and glycine is an amino acid because, so glycine at the pH 6.8 is actually having the very little charge because its pKa is very close to uh, this particular pH. So, what happen is that glycine is not moving. So, you can imagine that you have a gel well where the glycine is sitting at the bottom. So, glycine is not moving and whereas from the bottom you have the tris and tris is actually very charged molecule. So, tris is actually on the back side of this and in between you have the sample. So, what happen is the tris which is actually moving very fast from the back side whereas, the glycine which is not moving. So, the tris is pushing this sample while they are running into the stacking gel and as a result the substance comes very close to each other and what happen is they form a small band while they are running in a stacking gel. And this process of the stacking the sample so that they will form a thin line is called as the stacking of the sample and that is why this gel is also called as the stacking gel. And the importance of stacking gel is that it reduces the separate, it reduces the distances between the two molecule because of the well which is present in the vertical direction. As a result, the sample gets sandwiched between the glycine tris and get stacked in the form of a thin band. As the sample enters into the resolving gel, which is actually having a pH of 8.8, .8, the glycine is now charged, it moved fast and now sample run as per their molecular weight. Due to the SDS, they have the equal negative charge, so they run as per their molecular weight. If you remember the, the V is directly proportional to the uh, charge by mass. So, if the charge is same, they are going to run by according to their mass. Uh, so, after tracking dye reaches to the bottom of the gel, the gel is taken out from the glass plate with the help of the spatula and it is stained with the Kobasi billion blue and that stain uh, protein present on the gel. So, this is all about the theoretical uh, uh, description of how to assemble the gels and how to run them, but uh, 
uh, I would like to take you to my lab and I would like to show you a small demo so that you will be able to see how to cast the gels, how to prepare the samples and how to resolve them into your uh, into uh, how to resolve them onto the polyacrylamide gels and how to analyze these protein samples. In this video, we will demonstrate you how to run a SDS paid gel and how to prepare various reagents required for the running of SDS paid gel and what are the different uh, instruments we can use. So here this is the gel casting stand so where we can use these glass plates to prepare the gel. In between there is a space where we can pour our gel, gel solution then we will keep for some time at least 20 to 30 minutes let it solidify then we will prepare uh, stacking gel then we will load the our uh, protein solution. So here before doing that we need some reagents. So what are those reagents? The first reagent we need for this experiment is acrylamide. So generally we will prepare acrylamide 30 percentage. 30 percentage means 29 grams of acrylamide and 1 gram of bisacrylamide. This both we can use 29 is 1 ratio in 100 ml of water to get 30 percentage of acrylamide. So both these are neurotoxic. So we have to wear gloves always. After this we have to prepare resolving gel. For resolving gel, we need 1.5 molar Tris HCl pH 8.8. In addition to that, we also need 10% ESDS prepared in double distilled water and also 10% ammonium persulfate and also timid. The role of the ammonium persulfate and timid we can see during preparation of gel. They act as a catalyst. After solidifying we have to use, we have to prepare uh, stacking gel. So stacking gel is nothing but composition is same but we can say it is a diluted. It contains pH 6.8 Tris HCl and remaining components same but in less quantities. So after uh, preparing the gel, we will load the marker and the protein which is denatured at 100 degrees Celsius for 3 minutes. After that, we will fix this gel into this one, we will keep keeping this reservoir then we will run, we will connect to the power pack and run the gel. So this is the overall introduction of how to uh, prepare a SDS pair gel. So let us start the preparing gel, we will learn more things while preparing the gel. Before preparing the uh, resolving gel, we have to prepare the casting, uh, set up the casting gel. So this is the glass plates, this is very thin one. So this is the main glass plate, this is 1.5 mm glass plate. Uh, it is available in 1 mm glass plates also. If you are uh, loading solution is less like uh, you want to load only 20 microliter 30 microliter then 1 mm gel is good enough but if you have extended volumes like uh, 70 microliter you can use 1.5 mm gel you have to arrange 
like this sharp plates on this plate and the bottoms should be uh, equal then we have to put in this one this tray then we are going to keep like this so we have to check if we perfectly set up this one then there should not be any leakage but if there is any leakage your resolving gel may leak out and you will get nothing so in that case we have to check it uh, prior to pouring the gel so whether uh, uh, it is okay or not so i am going to use milk water so just after checking the gel is there any leakages or not so we moved forward uh, for preparing a resolving gel so the composition is given in this slide please go through that slide This is just water. First, I used water. Uh, I am going to add sequentially 4 ml of water. Now, I have to add 3.3 ml of already prepared 30% acrylamide. Already in introduction, uh, I explained how much percentage we have to prepare and how much quantities of acrylamide and bisacrylamide need to take. So here uh, we have to add 3.3 ml of acrylamide solution, 30 percentage. So I have to adjust 300 microliter. The next component is 1.5 molar tris pH 8.8. We have to add 2.5 ml. Next component is SDS. Here, SDS uh, functions as uh, plays as dual role. Like one thing is that it gives negative charge, gross negative charge on the polypeptide chain. The next component we have to add is SDS. Ten percent is SDS. We have to add hundred microliter of SDS to resolving gel. It plays very crucial role in uh, polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. Like it imparts negative charge on the polypeptide chain so that uh, despite of their charge, they will move based on the molecular weight. So I am going to add SDS. The other important thing is that 10 percentage ammonium persulfate. Ammonium persulfate, which is catalyzed by the timid, provides uh, free radical species 
विच एक्सलरेट दी फार्मिंग मेस लाइक मेस लाइक सेप इन अक्रलाइट जेल लाइक इट विल कैटलाइज फार्मिंग दी मेस सो दिस इज द टेन परसेंटेज ए पी एस आई जस्ट एड हंड्रेड माइक्रोलीटर ऑफ टेन परसेंटेज ए पी एस टू रिजर्विंग जेल In final step, we have to add timid. Timid after finishing, after adding all the components at the end of the gel, we have to add timid because if you add earlier, it will quickly uh, facilitate the uh, polymerization. So you cannot take uh, take out with the pipette. So it it complete it completely solidifies. So that's why you have to add at the end of the so i am going to add 5 uh, microliter of uh, this timid which uh, catalyzes the ammonium persulfate ammonium persulfate in turn provides uh, free radical species and free radical species accelerate the polymerization this is the overall principle of this resulting gel so i will add we have to mix properly then add slowly at one corner so so after this we have to overlay with on the top layer we have to overlay with some solvent like uh, 2 butanol or isopropanol or with water so why we are doing this because if the gel is exposed to air then the oxygen from the air will interfere in the polymerization of the gel so we have to add either water or 2 butanol for this purpose now we have to check whether it is solidified or not so it is solidified now we have to remove uh, the overlay layer like we have used uh, uh, water so no need to remove if you are using isopropanol or butanol you have to remove that and wash with the milky water so now we will start preparing the uh, stacking gel the compositions are given in the video you have to add 3.4 ml of uh, water first next yes 30 microliter of acrylamide
630 microliter of uh, trace HCl pH 6.8. Fifty microliter of timid and fifty microliter of SDS we have to add. At the end we have to add five microliter of timid. We have to mix properly after adding the timid. Then you just add that one corner. Next we will keep calm. Now we will wait until the gel guard solidified. Then we will shift to the buffer tank and then we will run the gel. While the stocking gel is solidifying, we have to prepare uh, sample for loading the uh, loading in STS pipe gel. So for that we have to prepare uh, loading die 10x or 6x loading die. It mainly contains 250 millimole of uh, millimolar tris pH 6.8, 30 percentage uh, glycerol, 10 percentage SDS and 0.05 percentage of uh, bromopinal blue. So here uh, we can add 10 millimole of DTT also as a reducing agent. Uh, SDS mainly works as imparting uh, negative charge on the polypeptide chain and DTT breaks down the disulfide parts. If you have a dimer which is uh, which you can see as a monomer in uh, SDS page, suppose you have uh, 20 kda 20 kda that means 40 kda protein which is a dimer actually you can see only 20 kda band corresponding to that protein because uh, dtt breaks down the disulfide band and you can see only single band if you want to see actual molecular weight you have to run it on native phase where there is no reducing agent or no detergent the other thing is uh, glycerol while loading the gel, uh, since the protein solution is not that much dense, it may come out from well. So in order to prevent this thing, we have to load with the denser uh, uh, solution like uh, glycerol. So 30 to 50 percent glycerol is sufficient for uh, keeping the protein solution intact in the bottom of the well. So other thing, uh, bromophenol blue, bromophenol blue we use uh, for just uh, tracking the how much gel completed. So this is the loading time. So we have to take the protein solution, uh, 
uh, here we already prepared a 10 percentage of loading die so that means uh, this is 10x loading die we have to prepare 1x to mix with the protein solution so this is 100 ml of uh, solution which uh, loading solution we mix 10 microliter of loading die to this protein solution you can tap down or pipe at this protein solution then we have to heat it for 3 minutes at 100 degrees celsius so that the all the polypeptide chains uh, i mean uh, dimers are if any uh, multimers are present they will break down and we can see nice band so i am going to heat this at 100 degrees celsius for 3 minutes this is the remaining of uh, stacking gel solution so we can see it is solidified so that means the stacking gel also got solidified we have to remove that gel and uh, fix it into this uh, this one and we have to keep inside the tank so I just take out the gel So in uh, inside this tank we only have this side one you have to cover uh, other side also so for that we use a dummy plate just hold it tight and close this thing after that gradually adjust the gel length so just we have to fix like this once fixing here we have to add this uh, running buffer the running buffer contains 15 grams of trace, 72 grams of glycine and 5 grams of SDS for 2 liters of solution, 1x solution. So this is 1x I already prepared, I am going to add, we added in this tank but the main tank surrounding to this one, we have to add up to the mark. So for reference you can see here uh, for 4 gels we have to add till here the buffer we have to load outside this uh, gel. So for 2 gels here uh, for 1 gel we can add like this. This is the power pack where we can adjust the how many volts we want to run uh, the protein samples are ready we heated sufficient time now we have to load this so we have to remove the comb carefully then first i am going to load marker or protein ladder Next I will load sap.
once the loading goes over we have to fix this gas tank I am going to set it at 170 volts As we can see uh, the, it is almost over So we can take out the gel Then we will stain and we de stain it Generally what we will do is We will uh, there are two ways of staining and de-staining process. One is we can do quick staining, like we have to heat it with the staining solution, which contains Kumasi Brilliant Blue and uh, along with uh, methanol and water. So then we will try to de-stain with the uh, water uh, by heating. But in another way, the simplest simplest way is we will just uh, uh, stain the gel for two hours. Then we will de-stain overnight. So I am going to show uh, the simplest way. First we will stain in Kumasi Brilliant Blue staining solution. Then we will de-stain in methanol water containing uh, salt. So I am going to stop the uh, children. Then I will remove it. I will show you how to remove the gel. Take out the last pairs. Here we have to be very careful while taking out gel, otherwise, the short plates may grow. On a corner we have to take and lift the gel like this. We'll keep the gel in a staining box. It is more or less a plastic one, but it can sustain the. So then, I'm going to add staining solution. I will keep it for a uh, rotation for on a shaker for at least 2 hours then we will uh, de-stain over So once the time is over, after 2 hours, we will de-stain this solution. Now uh, we kept 2 hours in staining solution, uh, we, as we can see the staining is uh, over, like we can see the gel completely turned into blue. So we remove the solution. Then I am going to add de-staining solution. And I will keep this on a rocker for 2 hours for de-staining. So the composition contain uh, for 100 ml of uh, de-staining solution, uh, 40 ml of water, 
double distilled water and 40 ml of methanol and 10 ml of glacial acetic acid. So, I am going to keep uh, this on a rocker. We have run the gel and uh, stained, uh, stained and uh, de-stained. Now we will capture the uh, gel image. So we can see manually also, but uh, for record purpose, we have to capture it through gel dark. So this is the gel dark uh, imaging system from BioRad. So I will show you how to uh, take the capture the images. So let. So here uh, we will use uh, white tray. There is another one uh, uh, grey or uh, uh, UV tray is also there. So there uh, you can see any fluorescent one or uh, stained with the ethidium bromide or blots, chemiluminescent blots you can use that. But uh, for uh, normal protein imaging we can use uh, this white tray. So I am going to keep the gel on this one so we have to open properly This is very important step, you have to align the uh, tray in a proper way, so otherwise it will show error. So once it is over, you just push it back. So we have to log on to account. So this is a SDS page gel. You can select the application, whatever you want. So here nucleic acids protein gels, bloods, three different uh, categories are there. So we are observing here protein gels. Protein gels stained with the Kumasi blue or you can use white tray, we are using white tray. So this is the right tray. You can use Kumasi blue stained one uh, gray tray also, but uh, we are using as we are using white tray. So we will use Kumasi blue. So auto optimal, then I will ask for capture. So it will take uh, one to three minutes based on the signal intensity. So as we can see, it is optimizing the uh, signal intensity. You can minimize this one also so that you can see the gel image. So now it is over. If you want to do any modifications to image, for suppose you want to decrease or increase the signal intensity. So this kind of uh, changes you can do. So if you want to send this gel, you can have send and save. If you have any uh, drive connected to this one, you can send directly to this one, uh, that thing. So for image analysis part, uh, we'll show in the upcoming video uh, how to analyze the what this band of interest correspond to which molecular weight. So we already loaded the molecular weight one, so we can easily find out using image lab uh, software. In this video, uh, we have learned that uh, how to prepare a SDS page gel and uh, how to run it, what are the precautions need to be taken while uh, preparing the gel and uh, how to observe, how to record the gel using uh, uh, gel documentation system. So, I hope this will give you a gist of how to uh, prepare and run a SDS page gel and analyze the protein sample. So, in this uh, particular demo, uh, the Banish and uh, my lab students have discussed about how to run the SDS page, how to resolve the, how to prepare the gels, how to uh, cast the gels and 
how to run the gel and analyze the samples and at the end they have also discussed what are the different precautions you should take while you are running the protein onto the acyl polyacrylamide gels and I hope these videos or the demo uh, would be beneficial for you to advance your work. Thank you.